over 50 years since Nigeria's independence, the country is yet to have a female governor. We have entertainment, TV and channels, so why not one for women that are more than half the world population doing so much for survival of the world? We teach girls shame. Close your legs, cover yourself. We make them feel as though by being born female, they're already guilty of something. Saying a woman should only be seen and not to be heard is violence against women. Women are a vital part of our existence. The mothers of our children are support. Hence, they deserve to live full lives 100%. Tune in every Tuesday by 11 a.m. On Royal FM 95.1 for the program 100% Women, 100% Women, Celebrating Women. Good morning. Thank you for joining me on another episode of 100% Women Today. I am Timi Tokwe Ululeye. Today is an episode which is part of our monthly series and other series that we hold on this program called Her Story, where we get to narrate and share with you true stories of women from across the globe, true compelling stories. Today we'll be... We'll be talking about or share with you the story of Christy Sims, a woman based in the U.S., and she went through a very, very unfortunate incident. Her boyfriend poured acid on her. And so today I'll be sharing with you her story, how it happened, and how she was able to overcome that uh, very devastating uh, situation. But before I move ahead to share with you her story, let us listen to this 911 call. Now, 911 is a number that those in the U.S. can call when they go through any kind of emergency uh, situation. So this is the call that was made when her boyfriend poured acid on her. Please stay tuned. Henry County 911, what's up? Yes, I need an ambulance. What's going on? Uh, I was just on shift with my, my girlfriend. We just, uh, it's, uh, I think it's uh, drain cleaner. We are just putting it in the, uh, in the toilet and, and, uh, and we slip. Sit down, baby, sit down. Oh, she fell. Sit down, sit down. She fell. Uh, yes, uh, get, 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 send the ambulance now. Okay, is she breathing in conscious? Yes, yes, How just turn it on uh, 43, hurry. Okay, listen, I need you to calm down, okay? Okay, hurry. I understand that. I need you to calm down because I need to get some information from you. Is she bleeding from anywhere? Hold on, hold on. What? What? Is she bleeding from anywhere? I can't see screaming. Please, I somebody understand. help. I Is she bleeding from anywhere? Oh, my God. Ask her what is she complaining of. What is her she's complaining? What? What is hurting her? It's burning her skin. Okay, it's burning her skin? Yes. She fell on his brain now? Yes, sir. Up? I'm sorry. Can she get up? Yeah, she sits down. Okay, just one second. I'm going to get poison control on the line, too, okay? What? I'm going to take care of her. I can't okay, call. listen. I'm going to get poison control on the line. All right, that is just part of the 911 call that was made when the incident happened. You could hear her boyfriend's voice in the background. You can also hear her in the background screaming because she was literally born in a life. You can just imagine acid being poured on you. 
is such a very, very uh, horrific uh, thing to go through. So I will be sure with you her story, how this happened, and how she has fared so far. I'll be right back after this quick break. <laughs> This is her story, 100% woman. Yes, this is her story, a monthly series that we do on the program that you're listening to right now called 100% Woman. Her story is an episode where we get to share with you true compelling stories of women from across the world. Today I'll be sharing with you the story of Christy Sims, a vibrant mother of two when the unthinkable happened. What happened? Her then boyfriend poured industrial grade acid on her. And this is her story as she narrated it to Crime Watch Daily. All right, and I go ahead with the story now. Please listen. I lived in isolation for a whole year. It had nothing to do with vanity. It was social responsibility, said Christy Sims. I was horrible looking. Krista Sims and Andrew Fordman had a tumultuous relationship, one her mother, Elaine Turner, feared was doomed from the start. From the very first minute I saw him, I looked at him and I said, no, this is not the man for my baby, said Elaine, that is her mother. I didn't like his demeanor. I didn't like the way he carried himself. He just didn't look like the man that would be for my daughter. Christy and Andrew were on and off for several years. Very charming, very romantic, said Christy Sims. That is the victim of the violent attack. Did he ever express any type of violence verbally or physically? He had a, a very aggressive personality, said Christy. He was emotionally abusive at times. In retrospect, I didn't realize I was in that situation while I was in it. And we broke up for a long time. And it begged me to come back. And I went back. You know, it's the cycle of abuse. I was in it. I can admit it now. I'm woman enough to admit that I was in that situation. A successful substance abuse counselor and raising two children on her own, Christy Sims had just completed coursework to receive her master's degree. And Christy Sims goes on to say, I was 42 years old, but I went back to get a graduate degree. I finished in two years, and I'm the first woman in my family to go to college. So, you know, I didn't want to walk, because, you know, all these young kids, they're walking, and I'm 42 years old, you know, going back to school. But my mom was like, no, you are going to walk. This is huge. You are going to have a party. We're going to have a a graduation. She also felt it was time to move on from Andrew. That is the man she was in a relationship with. with. Now, one of the lawyers that was involved in the criminal case said this. His name is Henry County. She was beginning to see him as being a little too possessive and a little, you know, over the top. She did tell me that she was com- contemplating on leaving him. And I did say, well, Christy, just be careful. You know, you can't just break relationship- relationships of 
off just like that. Be very, very, very careful. She was confident, not thinking that anything would happen. But I still had this gut feeling, you know, and I had this prayer in my heart for my child. And this is coming from my mother, whose name is Elaine Turner. Now, Christy says she made up her mind to end the relationship in April 2013. That was the last weekend that I knew in my heart that we were going to be together. And so there was this resolve that I had that. I was finally ending that relationship and that I was going to be moving forward. And so I had a lot of peace about it, said Christy. And I think he could feel that, you know, this is my last weekend with her. All right. So moving on to what Christy just said, we'll go for a quick commercial break. When we come back, I'll continue on with the story. Please stay tuned. Hey, my name is Dakori. I'm an actor, model, and television personality. I always wondered why would water be jealous of H2O until I tried it. H2O is a sparkling flavored water that excites. H2O comes in two vibrant fruity flavors, lime and lemon for that sensational fruity taste, and tangerine for a burst of citrus goodness. It tastes oh so good and gives me a refreshing spark. There's nothing better than that H2O feeling. Now, tell me, why wouldn't water be jealous? Give it a try. You'll see. Get H2O and feel the O effect. H2O. Water is gonna be jealous. H2O is from the makers of 7-Up. Charlie, chop past chop. Go in Penisi Movita, now my secret of healthy living. Because why? Now the chop for the people with sabi quality. If they go via for throat with any kind of Nigerian soup. Chai, go in Penisi Movita. Now you correct people, they chop every time because you get plenty fiber and they digest well. Yes, oh, Mama Charlie, now the secret of healthy living. Darling, I don't serve better chop for you now. <laughs> You'll be correct, man. Go in Penisi Movita. Go in Penisi Movita. Now my secret of healthy living. Welcome back for that commercial break. The program you're listening to right now is 100% Woman, and I am Tini Tokwe Oluleya, the host of this program. Today is a special series we call Her Story, where we get to narrate to you true and compelling stories of women from across the world. Today's uh, story is about Christia Sims, a mother of two who unfortunately was a victim of acid attack. Not just by stranger, but the man she was in a relationship with, her ex-boyfriend. So I move on now with the rest of her story as she um, shared her story with uh, a publication called Crime Watch Daily. So I move on now, sharing the story with you. Now remember, she said this, that she had made up her mind to leave the relationship with her boyfriend. But the boyfriend had already had an inkling that... She was getting ready to leave him for good. So, this is what happened after that. So, it was a Sunday afternoon. So, that Sunday afternoon, while hanging out at Christie's home near Atlanta, Andrew Fordman, her boyfriend, called her from the bathroom. And he said, Babe, I have wasted a little water on the floor. Bring me a towel. And Christie said, I said, Okay grabbed the towel and I just started walking down the hallway so I'm walking down the hallway and I see him literally standing there only wearing boxes no shoes no gloves no shirt nothing and he's holding a yellow bowl from my kitchen which made no sense to me so I never even went into the bathroom I stopped and right outside the bathroom I was just holding a towel I'm like what are you doing like, why do you have a bowl in the bathroom? Then Christy said, 
He's slipping and sliding, holding the ball with two hands. My assumption was that it was water, said Christy. Now, even at that moment, I still don't feel danger, like I knew something was wrong, but I still didn't know that what's in that bowl is going to change your life forever. So I'm still standing there, and I'm just holding the towel. Before I could even move, he had taken the bowl with two hands and doused it directly upward into my face and into my eyes. Now, what Christy didn't know is that inside the bowl is not water, but an industrial grade cleaner containing 93% poor sulfuric acid, an extremely powerful corrosive. Now, Christy goes on to say, the first thing that started to burn, I didn't feel anything burning but my eyeballs. My eyes started to burn, said Christy. And he's just standing behind me. My last image is of him standing behind me, just watching me, watching me suffer. He never said anything, even from the point that I came down that hallway. He never said a word. He just looked at me, and then everything started to burn. Then I said, call 911. He kept standing there. Call 911. Paramedics arrive, but the worst for Christy Sims is yet to come. Now, Krista seems an attractive single mother of two had just been doused with a bowl of blistering sulfuric acid. A so-called accident by her boyfriend, Andrew Fordman. Her agonizing screams were captured on his call to 911. That is the call you listened to earlier. Paramedics arrived to find Christy blinded, her flesh being eaten away by the corrosive drain cleaner. Now, after 13 surgeries, this brave man... Uh, this brave woman, excuse me, behind the mask, decided to share her story with millions of people from all across the world. She goes on to say, at that moment, the paramedics arrive, that is, those uh, personnel that come in in an ambulance from the hospital. She said, they arrived, it was the most torrential rainfall in all of 2013, and this happened in 2013. And it was the rainfall that he used to rinse me off, that he used, it was actually the rainfall that he used to rinse her off. Because when the, when the boyfriend made the 911 call, and the, way the, the, the operator from the other line was telling uh, him to get water to rinse off her face, the boyfriend didn't do it, so he intentionally did not do that so that she could suffer more damage from the acid that he poured on her. She said this, I was closer to the door and I was too far away from anything else. And so they took me outside, stripped me down, took all of my clothes off. It was the rainwater that saved my life because the acid came within two centimeters of my heart. To spare her from unimaginable pain, Christy was placed in a medically induced coma for two months. So Krista goes on to say this. So I woke up blind, unable to walk, unable to move my arms because the acid affected the nerves in my arms. I had to have intense occupational and physical therapy for months before I could even walk or use my arms, bathe myself, and slowly over time my eyesight did come back. We'll go for a quick break. After that, we'll continue with Krista Sims' story.
This is her story on 100% Woman. Thank you for still staying tuned to Real FM 95.1. And the program is 100% Woman. I am Timmy Tapwe Urule. I'm sharing with you the story of Christy Seams, part of our monthly series called Her Story. And um, I'll move along with her story now. I remember where I left off was where she was actually placed in a medically induced coma for two months. And uh, let's move on from there. Now, she said this. At first, police were led to believe Fordham's account of what happened, that he spilled the drink cleaner, that is the acid, by accident. When Christie opened her eyes and was coming to terms with what had happened, Andrew Fordman, that's her boyfriend, was not in jail. He said it was an accident, Christie said. And when they questioned me within one hour of having my body burned to the third and fourth degree, 20% of my body, they questioned me and they said that I said it was an accident. I have no memory of ever being questioned, said Christy. I was in shock. But prosecutor Sandra Rivers is convinced this was no accident. Now, the medical personnel that came to their house when that happened There were two EMTs that responded to the house when it happened, and they are the ones that contacted the police, and they were the ones that said that it was not an accident. They said, you all need to investigate this. The lawyer, that's her lawyer, Stan River, said, to me, the smoking gun was when I heard the 911 call. The dispatcher telling him to put water on her. Because if this water had been put on her quickly, immediately, it would have negated the injuries, said the lawyer. On the 911 call, as paramedics arrive, Christy can be heard saying, I told him to pour water on me. Why is this so damning? Because Fordham never even attempted to wash off the acid. And that is her lawyer speaking, Sandra Rivers. Now, let's move on now to what Christie's mother said. Her name is Elaine Turner. She said this. He said to her, just sit there. Just sit there. When he put the phone down and came back to me, I said, what did they say? Why is it burning so bad? What is this? And this is Christie speaking now. He said, babe, they said if I put water, it's going to ignite the chemicals. So just sit there until the ambulance gets here. And I sat there for about 13 minutes, and it just burned through my skin. That is Christy Sim speaking. That is the victim of the acid attack. Now, if you listen as I'm narrating the story, this is a back and forth between Krista Sims' mother, Elaine Turner, the prosecutor, Sandy Rivers, that is her lawyer, and so many people that were involved in the situation when it happened. So you you hear me going back and forth between her lawyer, her mother, Krista herself speaking and all that, because... According to this uh, publication, they actually went in-depth to investigate what really happened. So I'll move on now to what her lawyer said. Sandy Rivers, that is her lawyer. Her lawyer said this. If you spend a lot of time looking at domestic violence cases, there is the classic phenomenon of, if I can't have you, nobody else will. And I think that he wanted to make her unattractive to anybody but him. Now, the lawyer Rivers is determined to prosecute Andrew Fordman, but she will need Christie's help to do it. Christie shows an incredible courage, revealing to the entire world the horror inflicted upon her by the man who claimed he loved her. Now, I'm moving on now to what Christie said. Christie said this. He could have rinsed me off and just him rinsing me off. 
I would have burned probably to the second degree, but I would not have had to have my entire face replaced. I would have some resemblance of who I used to be, and I don't, I don't have that anymore. So if the boyfriend then had listened to the instruction that was given to him when he made that 911 call. Now, he was the one that poured the acid on her, and he was still the one that called the, the ambulance. Now, he intentionally decided, they instructed him to pour water on her in order to kind of um, reduce the effect of the acid on her face and body. But he intentionally did not do that. Why? So that Christy could suffer as much damage as possible. What a world we live in. Another commercial break. We'll be right back after this. It's a ball! Yeah. Go. By who? How? When? Uh, it's not the same match we're watching. Oh, oh, oh! It's a goal! I just saw the goal now. <gasps> this is my so-called live broadcast. They delay me that too. Uh-uh. What? Don't worry. Let's switch to video call so I can live stream the match for you here from Russia. Huh? Video call? Mm-hmm. With all these expensive roaming rates? Uh, Not to worry. Data is so cheap with MTN Russia roaming offer. With the Russia roaming offer, you can get 1.5 gigabyte roaming data for just 2,000 naira. Dial star 131 star 5 star 4 hash to activate. Offer valid for 30 days. You can also make calls for 100 naira per minute. Available on Tele2 Russia only. Wow. Wow. See how clear it is. I didn't want to hear that when you both went to your side. Okay, okay, okay. Zoom in for that free kick. Okay. It's, it's a goal! Oh, ego. Goody. Oh, oh. Ego. You're silly for work, my mom. Kick in your bashel. That's a lot of cantony. Eh, fucking for work, my mom. Go to Yawa. Eh, bitch, I was watching Russia to the Robani Sorore. Lost silly for work, my mom. So, Bashia can't in the left for Opamo, only to Joe Wolf, your Nashala to the Robani Sorore, but you pay, he left for Opamo, my job, no more dear friend of Basuko, or what I come out, Burakani, Shia can't in the sea, yours is your laugh funny. Uda, lost the left for Opamo, Uda, Jacka, lost the left for Opamo, Losha can't see, Oda Mugba, one law, one law, and we left for Opamo, Nigeria, at the left for Opamo, go go go, CBN, Pelu NDIC, Losian of Free Kedeji, Kale Janfan. Hi, my name is Ebuka, a TV host, media personality, and fashion enthusiast. People often ask me why water gets jealous of H2O. (laughs) The reason is simple. H2O is a sparkling flavored water with loads of swag. H2O comes in two vibrant flavors, lime and lemon for that sensation of fruity taste, and tangerine for a burst of citrus goodness. With H2O, you always get that refreshing taste that sparks up your day. There's nothing better than that H2O feeling. So tell me, why wouldn't water be jealous? That's right. Get H2O and feel the O effect. H2O. Water is gonna be jealous. H2O is from the makers of 7-Up. Jali, chop pass chop. Golden finish in Movita, now my secret of healthy living. Because why? Now the chop for the people with sabi quality. If they go via for throat with any kind of Nigerian soup. Chai, golden penis in Movita. Now you correct people, they chop every time because it get plenty fiber and it they digest well. Yes, yeah, so Mama Chali, now the secret of healthy living. Darling, I don't stop better chop for you now. You be correct, man. <laughs> <laughs> golden penis in Movita, now my secret of healthy living. This is her story.
a hundred percent woman. Welcome back once again for that commercial break. The program you're listening to is 100% Woman. And today's episode is titled Her Story, where we get to share with you true and compelling stories of women. I've been sharing with you the story of Christy Sims, an acid attack victim who went through a very, very uh, terrifying and devastating incident of having acid poured on her by her uh, ex-boyfriend. And so almost done with the story, we'll just go ahead and finish up with the story right now. And then I will uh, definitely have you listen to a clip of her being interviewed uh, live. So you get to hear her voice as well. And um, we'll move on from there. All right. So let us uh, finish up with her story. So the last thing that Christy said was that, um, like I like told you, the boyfriend was instructed to use water to rinse off the acid from her body, but the boyfriend would not do that. And uh, she said that um, if he had done that, she could have still kept some of her face. She would have still been able to look like what she used to look like before. But because she didn't do th- he didn't do that, unfortunately, she lost a lot of her face, his facial skin, and so... She, started, she, she now looks totally different from the way she used to look before. Now, actually, on our Facebook page, if you go to, if you go to www.facebook.com um, forward slash rulefm951, you see her before and after picture there. So you get to see what I'm talking about, okay? All right, let's move on to the story. Now, Christy uh, decided to summon the strength to face Fort Herman in court, testifying to, to his unspeakable cruelty. And Christy said this, that's the part that is hard to forgive because even after he doused me, he let me sit and burn. And he saw how much pain I was in. See, nobody else saw how much pain I was in, but he did. He saw it. Now, despite uh, the boyfriend's claims of innocence to the bitter end, Andrew Fordman, that is her ex-boyfriend, was found guilty and sentenced to 20 years behind the bars. In the meantime, Christy Sims has endured more than a dozen painful reconstructive surgeries. And Christy said this, I had a social responsibility. You don't go out in public looking the way I was looking. My own daughter was afraid of me. So children could not even be around me. Can you imagine? Innocent children, of course. Can you imagine how terrified they would be if just to see someone look like that? Now... Christy had found the strength to turn her tragic story into a shining example of hope, faith, and courage. She decided to write a book called Yellow Tulips on a Cloudy Day. Her lawyer, Sandra Rivers, said this. She's funny, she's fun, and she's not been victimized by this. She's stronger because of this. It has changed her life, but I don't think it will define her life. Christy decided to start a foundation to reach potential victims of domestic violence before it's too late. And Christy said that, she said, I travel, I go into middle schools and high schools, what we call secondary schools here. I tell my story and I give all the warning signs. And instead of focusing on helping people after the fact, I try to prevent it. You know, they say prevention is better than cure. Christy's mother said this, Christy's still shining, she's still shining, she's still courageous. I'm so proud of her, about the fact that she's stepping out, speaking to people in crowds all over the world, and you know, she is not ever going to give up. She's going to always press forward, because that's who Christy is. And Christy said this, she said, no matter how bad stuff is, like even being grateful 
for this little dimple right here, you just find a way to be grateful. And that's how you survive. You find something positive and a negative. And also, she said this. Don't ever give up. Tell your story until someone listens. It could save your life. And um, acid attack is a very, very common thing. A lot of people, unfortunately, are victims of acid attack all over the world. And it's a good thing that this lady, Krista Sims, has turned that tragedy into something positive by starting a foundation to help uh, potential victims of uh, domestic violence and also to write a book to tell her story as well. So... um, I'm just going to have you listen to a clip. She was being interviewed uh, on a program on TV and just a little bit of what she had to say. Here we go. And I had made a decision, you know what, I can't marry a guy that my kid, that, you know, there's nothing there. And he just became more and more possessive and controlling Mm -hmm. um, to the point where it was making me miserable. So what did that look like? What did controlling and possessive look like in in a specific way? Going through my personal things, crossing boundaries, he would go through my phone, you know, find ways into my, to my locked phone, and then drill me about what's in my phone, my personal phone. This is a guy that wasn't my husband, that didn't live with me. He would find ways into my computer, um, you know, start acu- accusing me of things that, you know, were just not true. You know, very jealous, very possessive. I worked in an all-male environment, and he had a problem with that, you know. So... Just things that I did not do to him, and I did not feel comfortable with him doing to me. You know, he made me feel very unfree. I felt like I had to check in all the time. Mm -hmm. And if I was missing for a few hours, he would have called me a million times during that time, you know. Mm -hmm. These are all signs of abuse. And to be honest with you, this guy was pretty much that way throughout the relationship. But I became more cognizant of it as I started to study human behavior and as I became more aware of myself. Because you were studying to be a counselor, so you were already in your master's degree program. Yeah, I finished my master's degree um, about six months before this happened. Okay. He did this about 12 days before I was supposed to graduate. Mm. A lot of people say she was pursuing her master's degree. I was already working as a counselor. I was already helping people, and I had already earned my master's degree. But I'm the first one, woman in my family to get a master's degree, so I wanted to go back and walk. You know, at 42 years old, I wanted yeah. to wear the cap and gown. And down. You know? That's right. So, um, and he knew that, and he knew how important that was to me. And I think that that milestone... Um, which was a great thing in my life. I think it felt like it was a ladder away from him, to him, you know. Do you, do you feel like he felt like it was, he needed to go out of his way to kind of keep you in check, to, to when there's things to celebrate in your life where you're going up, that he needs to be the one to sort of kind of keep you down? Yeah, this is a guy that didn't finish high school. You know, he was, you know, he owned businesses and things like that, but didn't value education the way that I valued education. Uh-huh. And um, always kind of... How do you put it? Um, reduce the fact that I was an educated woman. Mm-hmm. But in retrospect, I think it was because, you know, he felt inadequate in that area. Yeah, you insecure. Know, mm-hmm. In that area. So. Okay, so let's go back to um, that day. I want to know about what were you doing? What was happening? What was your countenance like before this happened? So in the, in the, just what, take us through that particular day up until the time when this happened to you. I woke up about... 10 o'clock that morning and I just woke up with this excitement you know I had this if you can imagine I was 42 years old I had just finished a really tough master's program I was working in a job that I absolutely loved my kids were happy I had survived that whole divorce storm and I was just happy I was looking good I was thin and cute and (laughs) you know I just had this one problem this guy in my life that was making me feel um, uncomfortable Mm-hmm. That's the best way I can describe it. Did, he wasn't did your friends me. or family know that, that this guy was now making you feel uncomfortable? I had conversations with my friends, but to be honest with you, it's, a, it's very complicated. You know, the cycle of abuse is very interesting because this guy was, you know, he would be controlling, but he'd also be this guy that brought me flowers and, 
So he was slick. Yeah, and told mm -hmm. me he loved me a million times a day. But but he got more, to be honest with you, he got sweeter as he felt me pulling away. And I, when I think about it now, it's because he held on tighter as I was moving away. Because mm -hmm. he could feel it. He mm -hmm. could sense it. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that stuff, those games that he played all along, they were just not working anymore. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. So, um, so you're feeling good that day? Feeling great that day. Just happy. Just like when I, can, when I tell you literally bouncing off the walls, like bouncing off the walls, I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm going to be graduating next week. You know, had accomplished so many goals. I, was, I wanted to make some, I had made some promises to my children. I was going to travel with them. Mm. You know, they were 10 and 13 at the time, and I said, as soon as mommy finishes grad school, we're going to travel. We're going to do some things. We're going to have some fun. Because, you know, for two years I was working during the day, going to school at night. And I missed a lot of stuff. I missed basketball games and, and a lot of things. And so I just promised myself, so I'm never going to miss another basketball game. I'm never going to. And so when this happened, you know, right before this happened, I was just excited about being able to do those things that I had put on hold for two years. Mm. And um, it's almost as if I, I remember the look on, on his face that morning. And it, it was still no indication that I was in danger. He just saw how happy I was. And when I, in retrospect, when I think about it, I'm like, you saw how happy I was. Mm -hmm. It's almost as if my happiness caused him a problem. Right. Like, my, like he was blinded by my light that day or something. Mm -hmm. You know, that's Pushed what I feel. over the edge. Exactly. Happy, like too like much, he, you're like too he, happy. Like, you're yeah. just too happy, you know. And, I, and that's the last thing I remember. I remember being extremely happy. At 2 o'clock, I was blissfully happy. And at 2.30, I was in misery, in complete misery. All right, that is uh, just a short clip from an interview that she had with uh, a host of a show on TV. All right, so that is Chris's story. Uh, just real quickly, just to let you know that she has touched, this lady has touched the lives of millions of people around the world. She's received several awards as a result of that. Uh, one of them is the Courage to Act Award, a Community Empowerment Award, and I can go on and on and on. She is a public speaker, a nationally satisf uh, certified clinical mental health counselor, and a survivor of an advocate against domestic violence. All right, so I'll finish up with this quote that says this. It says, life is 10% what happens to you and 90 percent how you react to it all right that's it on today's episode of her story on 100 percent woman on real fm 95.1 join me next week tuesday at 11 a.m for another episode i am timmy Tokwe Oleya. thanks for listening and have a wonderful day over 50 years since nigeria's independence the country is yet to have a female governor. We have entertainment, TV, and channels. So why not one for women that are more than half the world population doing so much for survival of the world? We teach girls shame. Close your legs. Cover yourself. We make them feel as though by being born female, they're already guilty of something. Saying a woman should only be seen and not to be heard is violence against women. I'm a woman. A woman. Women are a vital part of our existence. The mothers of our children are support. Hence, they deserve to live full lives 100%. Tune in every Tuesday by 11 a.m. On Royal FM 95.1 for the program. 100% women, 100% women, celebrating women. Uh -huh.